So what if our population was not normally distributed? It would help to know that our sample mean was approximately normal, and then we could make a calculation based on a normal distribution of the sample mean. So that's what we're going to look at next. We're going to exit out of here. We're going to go back to let's make uh, clear this and make a non-normal distribution. So we'll make it skewed. All right, this population is skewed to the right. All right, we can take a sample size of, say, size 5. And there are five values taken in from it. You know, they tended to be over to the left. Uh, one of them was to the right. Here's the mean. Okay, we could keep doing this. Sample five values. There's the mean. It landed in a, nearly the same spot. There are five values. This time, the mean was a little bigger. Okay, there are five values. All right, now, just to get this over with, let's take a whole bunch. Let's take 100,000 samples of size five. And look at that. Now, compared to the normal fit, it's, it's you know, not exactly normal, but it's a lot closer. Okay, so there's still some skewness to the right. Okay, you can see it's skewed to the right, but not anywhere like it was before. You know, what if we would have only done a sample size of size 2? So we can clear this and, you know, do 100,000 samples of size 2. Wow, it's still pretty skewed to the right. So for a sample size of 2, we lost some of the skewness. But when we went to a sample size of 5, right, that took out quite a bit of skewness. If we would go to a sample size of 25, it's going to be very close, very, very close. We can say we have an approximately normal distribution now, or very close to one. Maybe it's not perfect, but it's, it's really getting there. What if we had a different kind of shape, a uniform distribution. Okay, so we'll take samples of five values from a uniform distribution. They're scattered all over the place probably. Okay, we can try that again. Okay, they're equally likely to be anywhere. Try that again. You know what, when we average out five, it tends to be closer to the middle than the population itself. We're not likely to get five all on the same side. So let's get this over with and let's take 100,000 samples of size five. Wow. Right? You know, you can even make your custom animation here. Let's make this like, um, let's see here. We got to make the population here. All right, so we'll make it really stacked up there. And maybe just a couple couple weird you know make this very very skewed to the right how's that all right there's the parent population we got some outliers you know uh, but uh, what happens if I take a small sample size say size two here hundred thousand of them and it's not approximately normal size five a little better. Got kind of a weird gap in there because there's a gap there. Size 10. Wow. It's I wouldn't call it approximately normal, but we're getting there. 16. Better. 20. Better. 25. Better. Okay, we're getting there. Even with this weird distribution, if we take a big enough sample size, the sample mean will be approximately normal. This is the central limit theorem idea. The larger the sample mean, the closer, uh, the larger the sample size, the closer the sample mean gets to being approximately normal. This population was skewed to the right. Sample size of five, it's a lot less skewed to the right. All right, if we get a sample size of 25, 
it's hardly skewed to the right at all. You can barely tell. So the central limit theorem says, if we draw a simple random sample of size n from any population with a mean population mean of mu and a finite standard deviation of sigma, the central limit theorem will say that when n is large, the sampling distribution is approximately normal. How large? Generally speaking, I, I think a rule of thumb would be if the sample size is at least 30, then the sample mean will be approximately normal no matter what the shape of the population mean is, or the, of the, what, no matter what the shape of the population is. And that is really an important theorem. To know that our sample mean is going to turn out to be approximately normal because sampling is like an important thing in statistics. And then if we know that, that we're going to have an approximately normal sample mean, we can solve a problem, which we will be doing uh, when we get to the next video. Well, we won't get to that next video just yet. I think we got some time left on this one. And yes, we do lots of time left on this one. Okay, so let's do a little summary here. If the population is normal to begin with, the sampling distribution of X bar will also be normal no matter what the size of N is. If the population is not normal, we gotta look for a larger sample size. Okay, the sampling distribution of X bar will be approximately normal when the sample size is large, like greater than or equal to 30, All right? If we have at least 30, and they st it was now here they say, and in most cases on the AP test, maybe they give you a problem with a sample size of 40 or 50, and you could say, I know that the sample mean is approximately normal. Be careful about the small sample size. Because if the population is not known to be normal, then our sampling distribution will retain some characteristics of the population distribution, like skewness, and then we cannot do a normal calculation. All right, so let's make a problem here. I will have the solution for this problem in the next video. A bank in a small town has a stock, has to stock, sorry, a single automated teller machine with cash at the beginning of each day. Only one ATM machine while well, it is a small town. Based on thousands of transactions in the past year, they know that the average amount of money requested by a customer is $87 with a standard deviation of $52. I usually take out 100 sometimes 200 All right, the distribution of money requested is strongly skewed to the right. The bank estimates that there will be 50 customers, uh, uh, that there will be 50 customers requests for cash from the ATM each day. Uh, 50 is the sample size. All right, the bank is trying to decide how much total cash should be stocked in the machine at the beginning of each day. We don't want to run out of money. Okay, so on the average, you know, we're, uh, we're going to have 50 customers a day. And on the average, $87 is taken out per customer with a standard deviation of 52. So, so let's see if you can work this problem out. I'll have a solution uh, worked out in the next video. Calculate the probability that a random sample of 50 customer requests for cash would require a total of $5,000 or more. Or on the average, that's $100 per customer. And how much money should the bank put in the ATM to be 99% certain? The machine will have enough money to satisfy a random sample of 50 customer requests. Well, then, at least on most days, uh, we wouldn't run out of money 
and we want to be 99% sure, so you should be shading in 99% of the area would be a hint at figuring out the value uh, that would make 99% shaded. All right, give it a try. Uh, next solution, the solution will be in the next video.